Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how to solve a system of equations with three variables. Now, first of all, when you have three missing variables, you're going to need three equations to solve your system. And you can see in these two examples that I'm going to solve for you today, we have our three variables as well as three equations. So we're good there. Now, the primary way that we're going to solve these algebraically is we're going to look at the um, substitution and elimination method that we use for solving a system of two equations. And we're just going to apply those now to our three equations. And basically, the way that I like to think about this is doing things one at a time. Now, this first example is actually fairly basic because if you think about substitution, which we did in um, systems of two equations, we already have the value of c, right? That is one of our solutions. Again, our goal here is we're trying to find the values of a, b, and c that make all three of these equations true. Well, we already know what makes the last equation true. That's 1. When c is equal to 1, that equation is true. That one's good. Now, if I want to find the values um, for b and a, again, like kind of working at one at a time. We already got one solution. Now let's kind of see, can we substitute in c, the value of c into another equation to find another value? And we can, right? You can do 3b plus 1 equals negative 8. Now I just need to solve for b. So therefore, I'm um, going to subtract 1. 3b equals negative 9. Divide by 3. B equals a negative 3. So now I've figured out the value of B. So we're kind of just doing one variable at a time, right? We're doing one step at a time. And now we know the value of C, we know the value of B, and we have two values of our equation. We can just substitute them in into our top equation and then solve for A. So what I have here is A plus B, which now we know is equal to negative 3, minus a 3 times C, which we now know is 1 equals a negative 7. Okay? So I can simplify this here. a minus 3 minus 3 is equal to a negative 7. You owe me $3. You borrow 3 more. You now owe me $6 equals negative 7. And then you add 6. And therefore, a is equal to 1. So now we know that when a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 3, and c is equal to 1, that this system is solved. That is going to be the values that make each and every one of these equations True. We just did it one variable at a time. Now, sometimes we're going to do things one variable at a time. Other times we're going to do them at one equation or one set of equations at a time. So if we look at this last example or this next example, you can't just solve for a variable like we did in the last one, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, I need to pick a variable that I can eliminate. Just one variable at a time that I can eliminate. And we either are, we're not going to do substitution like we did last time. We're going to want to look to elimination. So if I add two equations, is there a variable that can easily be eliminated? And thankfully, we see that if I eliminate these two equations, I will eliminate the variable z. right? So what I'm going to do is to make this a little bit easier is I'm going to organize these as equation 1, 2, and 3. So what I'm going to do is if I take equation 1 and equation 2 and I add them together, that will eliminate my variable z via elimination. So therefore, I have 3x, then minus y, minus z equals 3. Okay. Now, what happens when I add these together? I get a 6x minus 4y. This goes to 0z, which means it goes away. right? And then therefore, this is going to be a 2. Now, this equation only has terms of x and y. I like that. I'm going to call that equation a. Now I want to think about, I'm saying, all right, well, what other equations can I add? Now, again, I don't want to eliminate x or y. I want to eliminate z, because my goal here is to create another equation that only has terms of x and y. So I can either add, again, equation 1 and equation 3, or I can um, add together equation 2 and equation 3. Since equation 2 and equation 3 are 1 positive, 1 negative, I kind of like that. So I like to kind of keep it that way rather than using negatives. Um, however, they need to have the same coefficient. This needs to be a negative 3, and that needs to be a positive 3. So what I can do is I can multiply equation 2 by a scalar. And that scalar is going to be 2. And then you're going to add that to equation 3. So when I multiply equation 2 by a scalar, I'm going to get a 6x minus 3y minus 3z equals 9. OK? So you can see what I did is I multiplied 3 times every single term in equation number 2. Then I take equation number 3, which is a negative 6x plus 4y plus 3z equals negative 8. Now I add these two equations together, and uh-oh, 
What happens here? Oh, that's a 9. 3 times 3x is a 9. <laughs> did I do everything else right? I did. OK, so this becomes a 3x plus y. This goes to 0z, which is just going to be 0, and then equals 1. Now you can see I have created one at a time, right? You just did one elimination problem, then you did another elimination problem, and now by doing that one at a time, I've now created a system of two equations for two variables, and they're both with the same variables. Make sure you have the x, you know, make sure you have the same variables there. Well, now I can use substitution here. So, oh, I'm sorry, I can use solve these using a system of equations. All right. So now I can basically either use substitution or use elimination. And it really just kind of depends on you know, what you want to do in this case. Um, since we've been doing elimination, you know, we, we can just go ahead and do that. Um, you also could use substitution here. But I think just multiplying this equation by 4 here is going to be rather simple. And then therefore I get a 6x minus 4y equals 2. By multiplying by, by, by 4, I get a 12x. I don't know why I would put a positive there. A 12x plus 4y equals 4. And now you can see I have a negative 4 and a positive 4. Just add those two equations up. right? So again, this is, sorry about that. I kind of forgot to mention that's A, and that was B. right? So you're going to take your system of equations with A and B. And then you add these two up, and you get an 18x. This goes to 0, equals 6. Divide by 18, divide by 18, x is equal to one third. So we finally got one. We got one. All right. So we found our we found our value of x. Now again, to find y, we need to plug this into one of our a or b's. Doesn't really matter which one. I think b is probably easier. So let's plug it in for there. So I do three times one third plus y equals one. Well, three times one third is one. Plus y equals one. Minus one minus one. Y is going to equal zero. Voila! Now we got two. So now to find the third one, I need to now plug this in, all three of these, into one other equation. I think I got a little room up here. So let's do that. Let's plug them into the top equation. So I have 3 times 1 third minus 3 times 0 plus z equals negative 1. So 3 times 1 third is 1 minus 0 plus z equals negative 1. Subtract a 1, subtract a 1, and I get z equals negative 2. So now you can see I have my three solutions. y equals 0, z equals negative 2, x equals 1 and 3rd are the three values that make each and every one of those equations equal to one another or true. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a system of equations with three variables. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.